Welcome to Electro Online. Here we're starting a new series of electrical engineering videos dealing with magnetically coupled circuits. So we're going to talk about magnetic coupling. But before we can do that, we need to understand one concept, well, more than one concept, but starting with the concept of magnetic flux. What is magnetic flux? The equation is that the magnetic flux, which has this symbol here, is equal to the product of the magnetic field times the area. Hmm. Now, what do we mean by that? Well, here we have a loop. The loop could be caused by a conductor. And so A would then be the cross-sectional area of that loop. And notice there's a magnetic field present because we have magnetic field lines. And the number of lines, magnetic field lines, going through the loop causes magnetic flux. So it's really the product of the strength of the magnetic field times the area of the loop. So here we can simply see it's the magnitude of the magnetic field times the surface area or the cross-sectional area of that loop. Now we can have the very same magnetic field here and a much smaller loop and so the magnetic flux then would be much smaller simply because area 2 is much smaller than A even though we have the same strength field. So you can see that the magnetic flux is simply a function of how strong the magnetic field is and how big the loop is. Make the loop twice as big, we have twice as much flux. Three times as big, we have three times as much flux. Increase the strength of magnetic field by doubling it, we have twice the flux. So it's really a product of the two. Now, we also need to know when the magnetic flux changes through a loop, either by the B field changing or by the area changing or both changing. It could be one or the other or both. Then we induce an EMF in the loop and that causes a current to be induced. Now we'll get into that a little bit more in the future, but at least you can see that the key here is the concept of magnetic flux is simply the product of how strong the magnetic field is times how big the loop is. If the loop is bigger or the magnetic field is stronger, we have more flux. If the magnetic field is weaker or the loop is smaller, we have less flux. It's just the total amount of magnetic field lines going through the loop. And when it changes, that's a key point, a lot of things happen when they change. Of course, when they don't change, when the B field remains constant and the area of the loop remains constant, if nothing is changing, then no voltage is induced and no current is induced. And that's the key. Also, what we need to realize is, what if we have an area, a loop of area A, and the B field comes in at an angle? So let's say that this here represents the normal the normal vector or the normal unit vector perpendicular to the area. And let's say that the B field comes in at an angle with that normal, so that there's an angle, let's call it theta. Then we can say that the magnetic field, or I should say the magnetic flux, is therefore equal to B times A times the cosine of the angle between the perpendicular to the loop, which means the normal to the area of the loop, and the direction of the B field. So you can say that if this is N and this is B, then we can simply say that the flux can be written as the product of the direction of the B field, the perpendicular to the A, so we can simply call that A with a vector quantity, so that simply means the area times a normal vector, so we can say that A as a vector quantity is simply equal to the magnitude of A times the direction of the normal vector, so that's this, times the cosine between them. And so this can therefore be written as B times A times the cosine of theta. So you can see that if the magnetic field is not perpendicular to the cross-sectional area of the loop, if it's at an angle, so the B field is like this and it's at an angle, then we have to take into account the cosine of theta to calculate the flux, the magnetic flux through the loop. So it's all about magnetic flux through the loop. If it's perpendicular, it's B times A. If it's not perpendicular, then it's B times A times the cosine of the angle between the normal and the direction of the B field. So hopefully that'll give you a better perspective of what we mean by magnetic flux.